area for uh, nearly 30 years, uh, research and outreach in Latin America, Africa, Eastern Europe, and the former Soviet Union. And uh, he's got a, uh, he's put together a book and a DVD study on Christianity, cults, and religions. Paul Carden, welcome to today's issues. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about uh, the ministry that God has given you in this area. Well, you're very kind to ask. Uh, in 1980, I uh, was hired by the late Walter Martin. Some of you are, some of our audience may be old enough to remember who he is. Right. He wrote a book called The King of the Cults. He was known as the Bible Answer Man for mm. many years. And uh, first he took me on as a researcher and uh, editor. And uh, my life changed when he sent me to Africa in 1981, and I saw the tremendous lack of information, uh, of resources available to pastors and others in the developing world who were having to contend with the influx of groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, but many others, with, with almost no training, almost no means of uh, protecting their people against the kind of error uh, systematic, aggressive, organized error that was being introduced to their countries. And I really got a burden to help uh, believers in uh, the post-communist world, the third world, to uh, grow in discernment and be able to not only resist these cults, but evangelize them. Uh, tell us about the difference between, it's interesting, it's a really good title, Christianity, Cults, and Religion. Just take those just take those three words and define them for us as you're using them. Biblical Christianity, you know, what's a cult, and then by definition, then what would qualify not as a cult, but as a, I guess, world religion? Sure. Well, <clears throat> Christianity, of course, is, is, is the religion of Jesus. It's, uh, it's uh, the religion of the Bible, which points to Jesus Christ as, uh, as uh, the author of our salvation, the, the, the origin of everything that is. The, the person uh, to whom we owe uh, our absolute allegiance, the, the solution to the fundamental problem that faces us as, as human beings, that we are sinful and estranged from God and uh, need a mediator, need a reconciler, need a savior to, uh, to overcome that gap, to uh, cleanse us of our sins and uh, make us right, bring us into relationship with the one true God. That is Christianity. It's derived from the Bible, and uh, it's, it is, as Jesus himself has said, the only way to be reconciled with uh, God. Now, when we're talking mm -hmm. about cults, there are various definitions of this word. Most of them have to do with deviance and harm, right? You know, the, the, a cult is a group that there's, you know, it's, it's a way of believing that, that has a problem. There's something wrong with it. And almost inevitably, people will be hurt by it. Uh, most people think of cults in terms of, uh, of a controlling leader, a weird belief, and uh, followers who are being uh, somehow persuaded, even coerced into doing things that uh, no sensible person should do. Uh, but there's a, there's a more theologically oriented definition of cult, which is basically a religious group originating as a heretical sect that maintains fervent commitment to heresy. In other words, this is a group that's committed to the denial and distortion of central teachings of Christianity, teachings about who God is, uh, about Jesus Christ and his person and work, uh, central teachings about salvation, even eschatology. And uh, these are folks who have set themselves apart from the true body of Christ by virtue of distorting or denying central teachings of Scripture. And then a religion is, uh, and I like the definition we get from Dean Halverson, who's been working with international students for many years. Dean says that religion is a set of beliefs that answers the ultimate questions, such as what is ultimate reality? What's the nature of the world? What's the nature of humanity? What is humanity's primary problem? And what happens after death? So if you, so get, so if you get an ideology... Or, or, a, or a movement that answers those key questions, basically what you're talking about is a religion, even if it's something like Marxism. You know, I noticed that, uh, I'm looking here, that your, your, your book is in 
now in the seventh edition. Is that is that correct? That's the uh, that, that's the compilation book, Christianity, Cults, and Religions. Okay, just as a just as a a, a point of of curiosity, I, I'm sure over the years you have seen things change a little bit between the first edition and the seventh edition of the spiritual marketplace, so to speak. How have how have you think seen things rise and fall in terms of their importance as the different editions of this uh, book have come out? Sure. Well, I mean, for example, I think it was in the first edition uh, we. Uh, we had a section on Armstrongism. Some uh, folks will remember uh, Herbert W. Armstrong and his Worldwide right. Church of God. And uh, that has ceased to be a major force. That's a, a cultic movement that has splintered into much smaller, weaker bits. And uh, the demand for information about Armstrong and his teachings has really uh, diminished. We're, we've seen, for example, uh, with the Moonies, the Unification Church of uh, Sun Myung Moon, uh, with his, uh, the decline of his health, and his death uh, in the last year or so, uh, this group, while it still maintains uh, great economic strength, a great deal of wealth, uh, its its ability to proselytize and to promote the message that Reverend Moon is the Messiah and the solution to the world's problems, of course, has, uh, has been greatly diminished. Those are just two examples that come easily to mind. Cults come and go. Some of them hang on, of course, like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, Christian Science. Uh, with varying degrees of success, but some of them, uh, especially ones that we saw in the 70s and 80s as being scary and uh, and aggressive, some of them have just gone away. Paul, uh, Tim Wildman here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what you just talked about with the Mormon Church, uh, the LDS, <clears throat> we have so many, I, I have friends who are LDS, and, and there's uh, good people, uh, patriotic people, and don't want to spend too much time on this, but there is a difference between um, traditional Christianity and the teaching of of the Mormon Church. Um, you want you want to give us a couple of distinctives there, because I always tell folks, you know, and I, when I've talked to Mormons and I have friendly relationships, but there's a reason why they send missionaries to my house. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah. that's because they believe that I'm in error. That's and, right. and, they're the and, truth, and you're not right. That I need to be converted to to their way of, uh, you know, their religion. So, and and that's you know, hey, that's what they should be doing if they believe in what they're teaching. Uh, so I don't, you know, and those those Mormon kids on bikes are some of the best looking people you'll see in terms of their wholesomeness and so forth, and their vigor and their their. But there is a difference, and we don't need to pretend like there isn't between what the LDS teaches and what, let's say, a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Presbyterian church would teach. And so, but I always try to encourage people to talk respectfully about this. Of course. Because, and you do too, because uh, we are all Americans here, and we're talking about the Amer to an American audience listening. And so I just want people to take what you say and explore it for themselves. Go ahead. You want to tell us a couple of distinctives there? Sure. In a nutshell, people need to understand that, uh, j just by way of introduction, the Mormon Church, uh, <laughs> consistent with that definition of cult, theological definition that I gave you a few moments ago. I don't like using that with them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I'm, but I'm just telling you, theologically is a matter of categories. Okay? I know, I know, I'm, but when I'm you, not saying, when you, you know, when shake you say, your hand, say good morning, my cultist friend. <laughs> no, but, when you uh, say, wait, no, let me stop you right there. You say, here's the problem with language, is when you say cult, People think of Jim Jones and drinking Kool-Aid or, you know what I'm saying, uh, Kool-Aid sure. with cyanide in it. And 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 I understand theologically what you're saying, but people will turn you off and won't even listen to anything you have to say when you use that word to, def to describe them. Yeah, speaking uh, among Christians is just basically in terms of categories, this is a group that denies or distorts every single central doctrine of the historic okay. Christian faith. Okay. I just want people to have a sense of the breadth <clears throat> and the depth of, of difference. Except for the physical resurrection, everything else uh, is, uh, suffers violence, you could say, at the, at, at the hands of Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, and his successors, all right? Uh, two huge examples. One is Mormonism teaches 
a profoundly different doctrine of God. The doctrine, the, the God of Mormonism is a human being. He was a finite man on another planet who advanced to the level of godhood by virtue of his worthiness and good works. And we can become a god just the same way he did, by our own worthiness and works, which includes having to belong to the Mormon church. That's huge difference number one. Uh, huge difference uh, that follows from that is that uh, in, in Mormonism, uh, you save yourself, basically. Jesus Christ uh, makes a way for you, uh, it's, but it's as though he's, uh, he's taken on your loan, and uh, you have to, uh, and he spread out the payments, but you have to pay him back. You have to earn your salvation forever. When we talk about salvation, we're talking about eternal life. Mormonism has a general uh, category of salvation that applies to, to, to almost everyone. You'll wind up in some kind of heaven. Uh, the celestial or terrestrial kingdom, but for the celestial kingdom and the highest level where you achieve godhood, uh, this this is only for temple-going Mormons uh, who are faithful, who keep their covenants, and uh, it's, again, a, a giant distortion of what the Bible says, because at the end of the day, everything in Mormonism is viewed through a Joseph Smith lens. He defines reality for the Mormon. So he, he's their prophet. He, he is their founding prophet. He, seriously, he defines reality for the Mormon, not precisely, but in much the same way as Muhammad defines reality for the Jehovah's for uh, for the for the Muslim, uh, because he is the best person who ever lived. Gotcha. Uh, in the case of Mormonism, except for Jesus Christ, uh, he is he, he is almost the ideal man. Yeah. Well, you know, that's that's just one of the things you cover in, in your book and what our guest today does, uh, Paul Cardin, in his book, Christianity, Cults, and Religions, is he takes Christianity and then he talks about all these other groups uh, and what they believe and why it's different than than what, uh, what Christianity teaches. And um, you're listening to the radio program, Today's Issues, on American Family Radio. I'm Tim with Ray and... Uh, Paul Cardin, C-A-R-D-E-N, is our guest. Go ahead, Ray. 